Morning everyone, we're back. Morning, welcome to coffee. Well, I'm back. God knows where bloody Nads is. Nads? What's she up to? Um, morning, we're back. It's coffee morning time. Welcome if you're listening, if you're watching, if you're, I don't know, feeling, vibrations, whatever. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're all well. Hi, Lior. Hi, Tasha Weston McGowan. Hi, Ellery Jones. Jackie Rod. Where is she? So, it, what? You all right? Seems to be. Oh my Christ! Toff is excited. I was just saying on Instagram. You're not, you're not left was, holiday yet. I was just saying on Instagram uh, that um, on the live I was just doing that I was going to surprise you. First of all, you love this, this. Don't you? I think what I like about it. Makes it makes him go a bit cross-legged. Well, cross-eyed. Um, for those of you who are listening, uh, Nadia is currently wearing a doily, an orange doily. I'm wearing a beach outfit. It's a doily. And the reason I'm wearing a beach outfit is. I thought it would be nice if we went a bit retro with coffee moaning. Retro? Yeah. During the pandemic, we did a lot of dancing, didn't we? And romancing. We did all sorts of things yeah. with coffee moaning. And we I did. thought, we're going to get to the news and there's some serious news and some sad news and all that. But I thought, let's just be in a holiday mood for a little well, bit. Mark has a been I a my, uh, bloody star, on. dancing star on my Instagram. Well... Well, I mean... On the holiday. I was he's drilling done a very hole well. in the sand. He's not had any booze for 18 fucking years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, but he's been a great dancer, so I thought, come on, let's get naked. Well, not naked. What? Let's get back to the beach. Back and, to the beach? Yeah, and put find some beachy music, and I'm going to get... And I want everyone else to get up and have a little dance. It's only oh, going to be a little bit. I'm out of holiday find some mode. Music, find some music. Take your clothes off. Ta what? <laughs> Come on, we're going to be German. Come on, stand German? up. German? My friend Simone's never scared about taking her clothes off. Well, She's taking a lot. Them. Come I on, can't get take off. my clothes off. Well, take your shirt off. What pants have you got on? Are you joking? No, seriously, what pants have you We're recreating the beach. I wish I had some sand. The beach? Come on. There's still some in your gusset. Club, tropic, da, 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 da. I, but, the best thing I've for got, anxiety is a little movement a first thing in the morning. On. No, take that off quickly because it's boring. What? Put some music on and take your clothes off. I'm not taking all my clothes off. Well, can okay, leave your pants on. Can I keep my Who wants on? Mark to take his clothes on down to his pants? No. Come on, Mark, says Ellery Jones. Come on, come on, get some music on. I'll get everybody going, first of all. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, can I keep my socks on so I can put my shoes on? I'm going to get on. a glass and I'm still having a cocktail. I'm going to keep my socks on. All right. Well, no, don't keep your socks on. That's disgusting. Yeah, I can't believe That's this is happening. That's the turn off in the world. Well, okay, so socks off. So right. Okay. So I've got a drink uh, and we're on the gosh. beach. Right. La, 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 Excuse la, me. La, la. Right. Uh, put some music on. Okay. You've got right. to take your shirt off. Shirt I hope off. everybody's getting up with us. Come on. Come on. You know you want to. You're in a beat bar. We're in a beat bar. We're in New York bar. Come on, everybody, you can just do this. If you can't get up, just do your holiday arms. <laughs> what is that? Mom, you've got to take your shirt off, but you look silly. Come on, we're on the beach. Woo! Come on. Come on, everybody. If you're seated and you can't get up, just do your arms. <laughs> you're going to feel so much better. Just a little movement. Come on, baby. Woo! Hello. Shut off! Shut off! <laughs> Come on, everybody. Shut off! Shut off! <laughs> Woo! Yeah. All we've had is a cup of tea. <laughs> Can't stop now. <laughs> Did you miss us? That's it, that's it. No, Mark, that's it. We'll get this off. No, it's too much. Sorry. Calm down. <sighs> you always have to go too far. Oh, God. That's a good tune. That was a good 
tune? Is that an allowed tune? Yeah. A What's free it? tune? Yeah. Morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Coffee Morning. We missed you. Oh, we so did. And actually, that little dance there is relevant to one of our topics today. In the yeah. Last 20 seconds. Breathlessness. <laughs> oh, definitely woke you up. Oh, look, I can see hearts going up. I've not seen hearts go up on YouTube. And did for a while. anyone move? And did anyone feel a bit better for it? Do, 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 do. This is a nice. I did. I didn't wear this on holiday because you don't like. You don't like. Um, what's Tits. it called? <laughs> you don't, what's this called? Leopard print. What is it? It's leopard print. I hate leopard print. He hates leopard print. It makes me think of the Rover's Return. That's what he always says. Yeah. Somebody oh, Vicky, waiting the candle lady. Too far, you started it, says Jules. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I know, I did. Yeah, pulling me up. <laughs> but you have to um, know when to stop. I never know when to stop. No, you don't. At anything. Oh, we've missed you. We had a lovely holiday. Really missed really you. Really nice. It was very needed. We'd had some really stressful stuff going on just before. And we, I actually was really worried that we would have a shit time because we wouldn't be able to decompress. Yeah, and it was a very, you know, for, from my perspective, it was a very conventional sort of break, um, you know. Uh, yeah, package. Uh, lots and lots and lots of people. <laughs> uh, but it was, you know, I tell you're, you you're going to find out so much about it. I tell you what I've discovered, though, what so a discovered? lot more expensive. If there's more than two of you... It's a lot more expensive to stay in a hotel than it is to have a villa. People always think villas are for like rich people. All inclusive is a con. <laughs> no, I'm no, it's not. No, it's, it's not, not a con. It's not a con. Actually, all inclusive is, inclusive is really few, useful yeah. at the moment because yeah, yeah. honestly, the prices are high in Spain. Mm. We were paying the same. We went out. We only went out a couple of times for dinner. It's the same as London. Quite a same few times, we got uh, we got bread and Lay's crisps and cheese oh, from and the are... spa, and we had. Like a picnic on the beach. Then the two nights. nights we had, Bur well, two nights we had Burger King, one night we had McDonald's. Oh my God. And now, has anyone tried, sorry to go off on one here, has anyone oh, tried so the Spider-Verse Spider Burger from uh, Burger King? Is it out here? What you're going to like about this, and I had to do a, what's, what's it called? A bangle. What's it called? A banger when you eat loads? Oh yeah, banger. A banger. It's horrible. A mangle. I, I film myself eating it. I just had to because it's red like Spider Man with black the bun is red. sesame seeds. Quite something. If you've, got, if you've got kids that love Spider Man, mind you, red food colouring. And obviously, it's confused a few people, but for those of you who know the channel very well, yes, Cornwall from last year has gone through. Very sweet comment there. Was it Lucy Muller? The Cornwall vlog made me cry today. Just so heartwarming. It's, a, it's, a, very, it's a very moving one. It's very gentle. Yeah. So, that was last the year's Cornish holiday, capers. is now playing out on a vlog. But we are up to date almost with our vlog, so we'll be hopefully. Putting out our vlogs at the same time, which I'm really keen to do. Yeah, yeah. Mukbang. Mukbang is Bang, what it's called. Uh, you need your Cornwall treat. Um, I'm all confused. I thought you'd just been to Cornwall. Elspot, no. You see, the weird thing about this world of content, like television is, it doesn't happen as it happens. No, but you can understand why people... No, 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 no. But I'm just saying. Yeah, no, it's weird. But, I mean, it doesn't always happen as it happens. So, yeah, it's just... Consider it like an old series which is landing now for the first time. Shot last year. Oh, look, someone else has just gifted. I gifted 20 memberships this morning as a little welcome back, Prezi. Aww. But Jew Osler has gone and done 5-2. That's very kind of you too, Joe. That's very, very... Jew, sorry. Very, very kind of you. Uh, yeah, this is a, an Adelie cup. Someone's just asking about the teacup, mm -hmm. CDC. Um, a little bit of admin. Oh, so many people saying they're loving the Cornwall vlogs. Oh, my God. It's, it, I have to say, I mean, the last one with you, mm. you, you get very emotional. It's very, it's very thought-provoking. I never watch myself because no. I hate watching myself. But if you're listening on podcasts, what we're talking about is our family reality show on our YouTube channel. You can just go to YouTube, put the Sawala Adleys in. And if you're thinking of Cornwall this year, we are great lovers of Cornwall. I adore Cornwall. I've got to squeeze in a trip somewhere. Just two of us. Just the two of us. We, we can, can make, make it, it if we try. try. Just the two of us. And then you're going to go to Just the two of us. The two of us. Just the two of us. Eating pancakes in the sky. <laughs> Just the two of us. You and I. She got them right. We were in um, spa, not a spa, but literally the spa. <laughs> yeah, by Chris. Eight, there were about 85 million spas at the shop in, uh, in Mallorca. And whilst we were in there, 
What was the bloody song that landed? What was I going to say? Just the two of us. I can't remember. Oh dear, that's just completely gone, that thought. Um, oh, a bit, bit of um, housekeeping. So we are, whilst we're away, we're discussing, it looks like a coffee mode is probably going to go a little bit earlier. Uh, it, oh God, I can't answer the door. The door. I'm not answering the door. Oh my God. I can't the answer the door like this. God, this, this is all so unexpected. <laughs> Excuse me, everyone. Um, you can just put yeah, your coffee mine is probably going to be at the earlier time of mine from now on. Um, and uh, loads of people won cards before we went away. Um, for those of you listening, I'm currently doing 18,000 press ups. Mark, you do not need to put socks on to answer the door. It's a thing. Just go. No. Oh my God. I think he's been. Oh, it's Dina. She's come round the back. Oh. She's come round the oh, back. Oh, thank God, I have even more reasons to have got my bloody clothes on. We're just doing coffee moaning. <sighs> She's brought Do you want to come in? Arch the door. This She's is my brought. sister. She's just come round the back. Because she lives next door to us. No, yeah. What? You, we're just hello. doing coffee moaning. I thought you were. That's why I was coming round the back. Yeah. <laughs> come and say hello. It's just as well you did They'll that. They'll want to see you now. I'm sat in my pants. Now you've got me to strip off. I've got him to dance like <laughs> he did on the beach. So here's Dina. Why are you getting your costume on? I don't know. Don't ask. <laughs> she thinks she's still on holiday. No, yeah, we're back, in the, world, back, in, the back in the real world. Back in the real yeah. world. Back in reality. Back. 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 So, so Dina, um, yeah. So, so Dina and I are doing the curly cooks this Saturday, and we're doing oh, yeah. a special. You've got to join us because oh, yeah. Dina's friend gave her this beautiful set. All still in its box, isn't it? Yeah. God, you look good. Oh, what nice. foundation have you used? Iconic. Oh, you look really good. Um, and um, yeah, and this beautiful vintage set, uh, dinner so. set, wasn't it? 70s. Yeah. So we're going to do a full Russell. 70s dinner. Yeah. Yeah! So we are, we are back and we are live this Saturday at 10 o'clock. Lots of people saying hello to you, Dina. Hello, everybody. I thought you were out at 7. I'm going, I've been out. I've done a breakfast for my friend. Oh, Come right. back. Now I'm going into town. All right. Ready. Then I'm going to the theatre. All Ready. right. This is her all the time. Right. Gotta live life. Has school broken up then? No, it breaks up this week. But I don't club this week. Like you, eyeshadow too. Where's That's, that from? That is Charlotte Tilbury. Oh, look at her. But about 10 years. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye, bye. 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 Everyone's saying bye. So, sorry, if this is your first time ever listening on podcast, you must think, what the hell is this podcast? But we do get to the news. But today is our first day back from the holiday, so we are a little bit silly. And obviously my sister was returning my vax. I mean, this is what happens with my family. When we don't answer the door, they come round the back and stick their nose up against the window. That's what I did the first time I dated Hence you. Why we so I went round the back and stuck my nose up against the window. Oh, God. Hence why we never have sex in the sitting room. I have. Don't tell me this now on live YouTube, please. Sorry, I've been having an affair. Mark shush. Right, carry on. Right, let's get to the news. It's coffee fingers. Somebody said lot, pe lots of podcasts have long intros. Do they? Yeah, Leo, I hate them. Does anyone I else really... hate the music? I used to hate the music that Global would put on Confessions of a Modern Parent at the beginning, didn't you? It's driving me fucking nuts. Yeah, like, like, I don't need it. Blow my brains out rather than sit through this garbage. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Pixie Petal, Sarah D, five hours from East Sussex, Truro, roughly so add that on from that. Sorry, Crosstalk. Sometimes I jump in on what you're saying, thinking you're saying something. I saw a Thank YouTuber you, the Christine. other day. Very lovely of you. Thank you. Beyond the Trailer, who is a wonderful, brilliant, um, slightly abrasive tonally in terms of voice, because she's quite New York, but I love her. She gives you like an adrenaline rushed sort of uh, news, movie news. She does this thing when she does her live chats, which I think is quite, she's very strict. But she says, keep the live chat to what we're talking about. So I turned off. <laughs> oh, God, that was too straight. So, I mean, within reason. So, but do 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 bear in mind. And again, if you're listening, I'm talking to everyone who's on the live now. If if you're sometimes your comments will come through a little bit late on a topic, and we might miss them, but then they might come through and we read them. So, you know, we'll try and stay within whatever topic we're talking about. So, don't don't feel we're ignoring you or anything like that. Um, Nash nineteen sixty three says hi Nadia. You both look amazing. What was the food like at your hotel in Mallorca? Well, I I'm a foodie, so I'm sorry to say. But I don't like, I don't like buffets. I discovered why they're called uh, buffets. I don't like buffets, but but 
The food was amazing. Yeah. Loads of food, you know, everything every day, fish, chicken, wheat, but it's just... A buffet is a I, difficult concept for an addict. It is. You know, in the end, I went and bought some olive oil and I was making a salad oh. and I wanted garlic and I wanted this. So yeah. I, th I would really recommend All Inclusive because I think everybody's watching their pennies at the moment and, oh, my God, it could skyrocket if you're eating out in Spain, it's expensive. But the thing about buffet, like the reason I, I, I now know why it's called a buffet, it's not buffet, it's buffet. Everyone buffets everyone else. It's, mm. I was standing next to, and this is no exaggeration, and I know, because I heard him speaking, an eight foot, nine inch wide and tall Russian man. And I, for the, I had an existential moment next to the, um, next to the kind of prawns section and the cannelloni section. I thought, some of these people are different, completely different creatures. I mean, he was hewn from different DNA. He wasn't of the same race. If we can distinguish between... I'm sure he said the same about you. He was a short one. Well, he must have thought, what a hobbit. He must have thought I was a toothpick. <laughs> but it's, it's quite something. It's quite something. Yeah, we, quite, we bumped into quite a few people going to Rhodes on the way, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, Jane Cessford, uh, Kessford, Cessford, sorry. Uh, yes, Mark, an American couple are like that. Went mad at Watchers. I just couldn't believe how much people eat. It's I mean, it's crazy. the hotel was amazing. It's like nothing ever looked depleted. Never. Never. There never. was never an empty bowl. There was never an empty anything. I ate chia seeds and but I was told every last single night I have done. lunch, every single breakfast, I had to steal three boiled eggs. Because... We always, Maddie was wanting to pull dick sandwich for lunch. Yeah, yeah. We had all this buffet, but all yeah. she wanted was egg mayonnaise. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Sharon, so. did you meet the screaming kid? Oh, what is, did you, and that, is that your post? Did you yeah, post yeah. the thing? Oh, no. There was a lot of screaming kids because it was a very I mean, kiddie hotel. Look, I, but I like, didn't seriously were, go out and hit him with an inflatable. If you were grown up, so they would close the bar at 11.30, but they wouldn't tell any of the families to shop at six in the morning. And for those of you of a nervous disposition who were like, I think I saw a comment from someone under it saying something like, oh yeah, but have you thought maybe the... Um, I've done my tour of fucking duty as a parent, <laughs> with all due respect. Since the age of 23, I've had a fucking toddler around for fucking years. Mark, stop swearing. I have curtailed God. screaming, shouting and tearing up walls. You've gone too far. I know I have. Stop. I'm very, I'm you really really need to calm down. How many coffees have you had? Two. Right, stop now. I'm pleased to be back. But it was a very kiddie hotel. But if you've got young children, that is the hotel for it. Honest to God. I've never seen such a clean pool, clean everything, everything. The all-inclusive, the kids love it, you know, Nutella and the pancakes and all of that. And do you know what I really enjoyed? What's that Watching now? babies. Because <laughs> we don't see enough little children. And the, oh, oh my yes. God, like all day I was going, oh my God, look at that baby. And it was, and I was saying to you, wasn't I, one day, God, do you get that feeling now when you look and you just go, we did all of that. Mm. Coming down to the pool with, you know, all the inflatables and the nappies and the... And it was just so weird to just look at this part of life and go, right, yeah. I couldn't imagine doing that. I mean, at the, at the hotel next to us, they had uh, late night competitions where they'd wrap infants in a uh, bubble wrap and they'd fire them at a cannon. Did you see that? It's been too much. No, they, they did. It looked quite sporty. Sarah Dean, as you look gorgeous in that gold bikini on your holiday. Didn't she Thank look? You. Can we just give a round of applause to this woman? Don't try and make, don't try and suck up to me now because you've gone too far and I've told you five times. Seen, don't do it. Seen through my ruse. So obvious, it's embarrassing. Get on with it. Come on, you're I, being too stupid. I'm going to admit something to you right now. Oh God. What? I've popped your. If you can't find your gold lame bikini, it's because it's in my glove compartment in my car. Good. It's a bit itchy. Oh. Okay. It was lovely. That would account for the itchy. beard stubble on it. It was from ASOS. It was a little bit, bit itchy. A little my bit white, itchy. Lots of people <laughs> loved my white polka dot one, which I loved. It kept everything where it... And it made a heck of a sound when you undid it. But it? I did get... I did drop some food down it, so it got a bit of a stain. So then I had to wear the gold alarming one. Now, the girls were wearing a different bikini every day. It was... It was, it was they looked stunning. Just sensational. I, 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 yeah. I loved my, I loved just looking at my girls, just looking so beautiful and so, mm. if you, you know, I think 
I think for some people struggle when their children, I know it's not just women either, for men as well, when, they're bought, when their daughters and sons grow up, kind of makes them feel sad when they see them looking so Why do you think I went off for two hours every day and just sobbed uncontrollably? But, but I, I don't. I just live vicariously through them. I go, God, yeah. No, I did. I did. It was kind of like a letting go. I mean, I, it, there were a few moments where I was in the pool and my purpose was lost. Because I used to throw them around and I'd bounce them about and I'd chase them mm. and I'd terrorise them and scare them. I tried it once and they gave me such a look of damnation. Mm. I knew it was off. It's from Freeman's, this one. I do work at Freeman's, this is an ad. Just mm. lots of people ask me where it's from. It's a doily. And I love it. It's, a, it's an orange doily. It's great, isn't it? But it covers a multitude of sins. You see, if you want to be a bit foxy, you can do a bit of that. There's one sin just and you, there. And if you want to do that, it swings and it covers all the bits you want to be covered. And because it wobbles, when you wobble, people think it's the orange thing wobbling and not your body. Yeah. Um, hi, Reese. Hi, Natasha Milchin. Hi, Sharon. Um, so, yeah, so it's lovely to be back. Lovely to be back. Now, one of our top stories today is a very sad story. Oh. Um, this is the story of Fiona Phillips, the presenter, journalist. My phone was pinging like mad yesterday because yeah. obviously she is, was a face of ITV for so long. And this is, this um, is the story that she's revealed at the age of 62. She has Alzheimer's. Um, previously, and I think this is the bit that really kind of cut through with you, wasn't it? Previously believing her symptoms were the result of the menopause. Um, so we posted on Coffee Moaning about this, sort of saying, you know, how would you... I mean, this always, the Alzheimer's story is whenever it affects some... I th is it, the thing here is the age, right? Well, this is it. I mean, so last night I was getting loads of messages from colleagues about it, mm. because we all know her. I mean, I've worked with her. She did, a number of times she did lose women. Mm. She was angry. Ang and... Um, yeah, and then another friend of mine messaged me and she said, oh, I'm just devastated because she helped me so much when, when my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So it, the, people are really, really upset about it. But then people that don't know her, I have friends of mine that don't know her, or even Dina this morning, the very first message I got from Dina this morning was like, oh my good God, mm. Fiona Phillips, 62. Mm. It's so young. And, and yeah... She's undergoing trials, she says, for a revolutionary new drug, which scientists mm. hope could slow or even reverse the illness for millions and millions mm, of sufferers. It's a really sad part of the story where she was, because she had to prove that she was at the mild stage of it. Wow. So she had to go and do all these tests. Yeah. Um, you know, what month is it? What day is it? What season is it? Arithmetic, mm. which, oh God knows, I would fail immediately. And, and how nerve wracking that was for her, because if she wasn't, if it wasn't mild enough, she can't go on this these drugs, which right. are an injection in the stomach every day. Wow, as well. okay. I, I just, I feel, I just feel so devastated for it because my really first understanding of Alzheimer's, and I don't know how many of you watched this, was years ago, was the documentary she did with her father. Yeah, you said this, but apparently and her father was, and mother. Yeah, so her father, her mother they? and her grandparents. Oh, wow, God. I mean, it's just tragic. Um, I didn't know there was a genetic... I mean, they still say there isn't, don't they? But there must be, if, mm. because you do hear of this over and over. But, yeah, just just that, that documentary was very, very powerful. I mean, I remember... I hope I've got this right, but I remember her, like, going, running down the street after him because mm. he was, like... And it was devastating with her mother first and then her father. So she yeah, lost her mother that. first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then her father was diagnosed. Mm. Her and her uncle too. as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh, God. So I know we've often spoken about Alzheimer's on here, haven't we? There's a number of you that have family members with Alzheimer's. And I think there was somebody quite recently whose father was diagnosed. And I t I've, I've spoken a lot about my fear of it. I have such a fear of it because of my memory being so bad. Mm. And so I know this will have triggered a lot of that in people. Is there, any, is there any sort of family history on your mum or dad's side of Alzheimer's? Not that I know of, but mm. I suppose in the olden days... People would just get quiet, or say less, have less of a mer mm. memory, sit in a rocking chair, and I think people probably there was a lot more people that had dementia and Alzheimer's that mm. you didn't even know. But I mean, we, we we certainly don't have a history of it in the family. I remember my nan. I mean, she she passed away at ninety three, and I do remember in the last couple of years she would bring herself into the lounge, she'd chat with us, what have you, and, and the, she had what you would call, I think, just you know, old age dementia. The, the brain. You get dementia with age. Everyone gets dementia with age. It's, it's it's like you know your muscles get weaker and all that sort of stuff. But she would sit there and suddenly catch herself and look at us. And this is in no way necessarily mm. Alzheimer's. And she'd say, what, did I just say something really silly? 
And she'd get, mm. so she'd remove herself because she was so quite, you know, she was quite But I do powerful. think with your nan as well, that a lot of that was being on her own a lot. She mm. insisted on being on her own. So if you don't keep talking, mm. you don't keep socialised. And mm. lots of people here saying they lost their mum or lost their dad. So it, it's just, just... The, the, thing, the thing that this story really, you know how they talk about white coat syndrome, you know, you go for a blood pressure test and you have a panic and then your blood pressure goes up because you're having a test and all this kind of stuff. You, you know how you almost, and like whenever I get tested for my asthma, whenever I go in to have an asthma test, I'm breathless and, you know, your symptoms almost get worse. My, my, I, I really felt for her in this because I was thinking as they were testing her and as you were just saying, you know, she had to sort of almost pass the test in a way. Mm. Given that you have such a history of it in your family, I wonder whether a sort of panic blind also. panic kicks mm. in. And so it's quite but hard also, to distinguish. But also she said she had a lumbar puncture test. Yeah, you mentioned I'd that. I've never heard of that. Has anybody heard? I didn't know that that was a way of diagnosing it. Something to do with the spinal fluid mm. will show whether... She said, oh, this is so <laughs> tragic. She said, I've cried a thousand rivers in the past few weeks and I've got nothing to be sad about. I've been fearing for my sanity and I'm scared to do things I've been doing with ease for years. Um... Obviously, she's married to Martin Frizzell. The, the anxiety, I think, was has been a huge thing for her. And mm. we don't often hear of that as a first symptom. But as isn't an it terrible, symptom, but couldn't that anxiety also terrible be... Terrible anxiety. But could that not also be the anxiety of thinking it's inevitably going to happen and it might not have happened yet? I mean, that's but the I think part also of it when you, when you gets so difficult Yeah, I suppose when... You, yeah, because I suppose with so much history, every time she forgets something or she... And I think that that's... Mm. Certainly with some friends of mine whose parents have Alzheimer's, had Alzheimer's um, and one particular friend of mine who's definitely not got anything wrong going on with her brain but she just will you know, she's very very busy she's got a million things going on and if she forgets something she immediately goes to that worry that it's outside yeah, yeah, and yeah. i think let's just read a few comments here because a lot oh. of you got experience of this uh jules my mum's mum had dementia and her uncle my mum's half sister now has dementia that might be vascular i don't believe that it isn't uh, hereditary mm. nicola h my grand and uncle had vascular uh sharon is I vascular dementia the same as Alzheimer's. I don't know. It's Alzheimer's. Don't know. A... Sharon, I fear it as I live on my own with no family nearby. Oh, sweetie. Um, yeah. Duoslow dementia is not age related. I asked on the poll, I asked the question, and I do ask this question. Um, I understand that for many people this is a very simple answer, but for me it never is. Would you want to know if you had Alzheimer's? I don't know. I, I mean, I think on the one hand, I don't know, because I wonder whether at the moment that you get these diagnoses, I struggle with this concept around cancer too. I really struggle. I think, I, I worry that there are some people, and I don't know if you're like this, guys, that if you're told sort of bad news and you uh, are told in uncertain terms you've got something or you're struggling with something, so that, that you will not, I, I wouldn't just slide down a slope of sort of demise quite quickly because... Because I, I and I wouldn't and, and actually I wouldn't go down that slope so quickly if I didn't necessarily know. Obviously, there are practical reasons for knowing because, of course, your family need to know. Need to know. So Somebody they can help there you. just saying, I remember you saying this a while ago, actually, and this has always been my fear with my memory. Um, sorry, I didn't catch your name and my glasses on, but you said you've just spent nine months being diagnosed or not for dementia. Oh, here, Nicola, Nicola H. Nicola uh, H to discover that it's mini strokes, which is my fear because my dad's had a number oh, of right. strokes. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah. And look, yeah. this is interesting. Uh, it, it can be, you can get a similar thing, can't you, from mini strokes? Yeah, Laura S, you kind of are chiming quite close to what I feel. If there was something you could do about it, then mm. yes, I'd want to know. If not, then no. Interesting. Well, what they mm. say on that is that the earlier they get it and you go to like the memory clinic and all these things and it teaches you coping mechanisms mm. as you go along. Um, of course, some of this you're just going to get whatever. But as you know, we see many, many articles about this, that brain health. And this is where I worry because I didn't do any cardiovascular for so many years unless I was dancing on a bloody table. Got your drinking main Jack Daniels. For a birth, for a later birth. But whatever is good for your heart is good for your brain. So Mediterranean diet, exercise every day, social interaction. Um, even if you're on your own... To be interacting online, all of that is just is just so important. There's so many different things we must do for our brain health. Victoria Moore clarifies, I worked with dementia patients for 10 years. Did Vascular you? is blood flow to the brain. Right. right okay. Uh, sometimes after strokes. So it's a kind of dementia that does come after strokes. Teresa Hutchinson, 
you've nailed exactly where I'm at on this. I can't answer the poll because I feel if you're told something, then it always gets worse. You feel fine mm. today, told you have cancer tomorrow, and die the next week. Would you still have died if you were not told? That's exactly where I'm at. And as ever, you guys articulate it so much better. I mean, that's exactly how I feel about it. I, I just, and, and that's not necessarily the case for everyone. I mean, you know, but some people hey, can be what? diagnosed and can, sorry, can, sorry, can be diagnosed and then can sort of fight it. I think, that, I think the thing that kind of moderates that as an idea is if you've been laboring under something for a fair while and you've got a horrible nagging doubt, that there's something wrong and then it's confirmed you might be able to then double down on it and kind of fight it and it is to say you know if you are diagnosed with something whether you wouldn't sort of just suddenly demise or not but i just i just sometimes wonder i don't know sometimes i don't know just because we can find out should we find out well a lot of doctors will say don't go looking because you'll always find something a lot of That's doctors in this country do not agree with these people that have these all over yeah but say for instance with my memory problems, which can be attached to ADHD, can be attached to the fact that I think I, 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 I'm dyslexic, all of those things. The fact that I left school very early, I didn't have an intense education. Of course, those neural pathways that you build with all, all of these things could be why I have a bad memory. Mm. But also with the history of stroke in my family and my dad and me being much more genetically predisposed to my dad. So I could like not go and get anything done because I'm scared I might be told it's Alzheimer's, but it could be mini strokes. And then mm. with mini strokes, there's all sorts of things you can do to make sure you don't get a big stroke. So I think it's better always if you're really worried about something to get it checked out. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think. Uh, just final comments. Not that I, not that I have, of no. course. <laughs> Final couple do as I say, not as I do. Final couple of comments on this. Intermittent fasting helps, says Creatorholic. Um, it does. That's why I first started doing fasting, because I was really scared about Alzheimer's and the plaque on the brain and all of this sort of stuff. And it was actually, that's when I first started, started doing 16-8. Also, fasting is very good for your, um, um, what's it called? Metabolism? No. Cholesterol. cholesterol. Mm. My GP said that to me the other day. She's a GP. You wouldn't think a GP would recommend mm. fasting, would you? Okay, so just moving on, because our histrionics and silliness at the beginning have, have taken up, taken lots of time up. Let's way, not so. do that. No, we're not going to do that. We we're not going to do body anymore. exploration rooms. We'll do that so. another day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as someone said from Germany, there aren't a lot of them. There have only been two of them. But um, No, but yeah. I just wanted to have a bit of a discussion with people on what we actually thought about yeah. it as a concept, not really about whether, bang, right whether it's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's right songs. Should so, we just do Jayla yeah, again? so just want to touch upon Jennifer Lo Jennifer, well, also, happy birthday to the NHS, 75 years uh, birthday. Perhaps leave some of your comments underneath this when it's uploaded about your own experiences. I did put on Coffee Moaning uh, Insta stories to share in your stories. Uh, you know, we often hear, a bit, obviously, most conversation around the NHS pivots around funding, around... Uh, how, how it can't mm. can't function, how it's going to collapse, how you know, obviously through the pandemic, I do think there is a, I do think there's a sort of strange resistance in almost all areas of modern day society to acknowledge that two years did knock everything off centre for some, in in quite a seismic way. So I think you know, as the NHS is trying to get back on its feet, you know, we've got Tony Blair today saying the private sector needs to pick up more. You know, they should be given more choices to people who can afford to take private care, to take private care, and all that kind of stuff. But just in principle, there needs to be more regulation with private care as well. Because... Well, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, I think in principle, the idea that it's it's seventy five years old is quite something because obviously, you know, it, the birth of the sort of you know the welfare state and all that kind of thing. And there's an idea where it's probably one of the most progressive ideas in a so-called, I hate using this word, developed, westernised country. I thought it was longer than 75 years. Did I thought you? it was like 150. Did you? But I'm not very really good yeah, at it. After, after World War II, wasn't it? It was the whole sort of yeah. austerity and everything like that. Yeah. I mean, one of the other weird things around the time of the NHS coming into fruition was the idea that, you know, we were still, I think we were still living on rations, weren't we? I mean, of course, one's not saying we should before. be rationed, but people were so much healthier when we weren't eating and consuming so much of everything. What did we do before the National Health Service? You would have, I mean, there would be charitable organisations. There would, you know, you would really? have, you would have, I mean, the Roundtree Association. And, but, but, I mean, prior to that, you were kind you of... Were you were scuppered if you were... scuppered. Just, yeah, yeah. Really? Till just yeah. after the war? Yeah. Before that... I think before I think between World War One and World War Two, there will have been sort of private enterprises or sort of... Yeah, there would have been poor houses and things like that. Uh, Joy Clark, my daughter had brain surgery yesterday. One of many QMC in Nottingham have always saved her life 
and taken such mm. good care of Oh, her. thank you for that lovely story. Oh, and God, lovely. big hug to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Erin Bullimore, I've got blood tests and an X-ray to do next week. Some, something wrong with my chest. Oh, sweetheart, God, uh, good luck. Good luck. And obviously, again, the NHS there to, to hopefully do that. Uh, Gloria Chesson, my husband needs an urgent scan and it took a week for the doctors to request one. I mean, I think the frustration, of course, is whilst, I mean, the NHS saved my grandfather's life. There's no two ways about it. Um, and sometimes, given his politics, one had to kind of slightly remind him of, of where the NHS came from. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, my nan always acknowledged that the NHS kept him alive for 30 mm. odd years beyond his first mm. huge coronary that he had, you know. Um, so the incredible care that my that that a number of my friends that have breast cancer at the moment that I'm witnessing I'm witnessing some really bad care from some other friends of mine that have breast cancer but but if you know if today we're thinking about the positive extraordinary mm. really extraordinary care and attention and mm. you know one friend of mine that's actually going through chemo at the moment when I go and see her it is such a happy like I mean she's very lucky it's a very lovely hospital NHS though but the care and the nurses mm. and everything and it's mm. yeah Jenny J There's says so much good out there but... Jenny J makes a nice observation I assume we are all probably NHS babies yeah, that's probably true. Uh, just a quick little detail before we just touch on Jennifer Lopez. Um, raise your mugs. Morrison's, the supermarket, is giving seventy-five percent off in all its cafes to celebrate oh. the seventy-fifth anniversary. So if you've got a Morrison's wow. nearby, um, Ooh, yeah, get on down. Get on down there. Seventy-five percent off in all Morrison's cafes to celebrate the seventy-fifth anniversary. That is really lovely, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so finally, we come to Jennifer Lopez. That's, that's our youngest daughter's favourite supermarket. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah. Find the yellow and Where black colours. So a really curious Morrison's. combination, don't you? It stands out, though, the colours of, of Morrison's. Um, Jennifer Lopez defends drinking habits as she slammed for launching an alcohol brand after Ben Affleck struggles. Um, and we thought this led in a bit nicely from our holiday. So look at Mark's Instagram. He's done a lovely post yesterday yeah. about sobriety. And, yeah. and obviously I'm always asked about, you know, drinking when Mark doesn't drink. Yeah. And so, yeah, we thought it was a perfect topic, really. I think rather than people passing comment on this, I mean, I think... I hadn't really thought of it from the perspective you you'd mentioned, which is she's talked about not drinking and she's launching an alcohol brand. I didn't realise that she didn't drink, you see. So I, I came at this from the perspective of thinking, well, we're a couple, you drink, I don't. Um, so first of all, I do not agree with her launching an alcohol brand, brand. when she has talked herself. over the years herself right. about the virtues of not drinking. Right, it's that like, does seem strange. It's like me doing a fish finger ad and I don't eat fish fingers. It would it's be it would be small. like Dina selling a steak. It's it, just, be, it, it, it doesn't make, make make much sense. So that side of it, I hadn't realised. But the other side of it, I think a number of people are talking about the insensitivities around this regarding Ben, and given the fact that obviously he's struggled with not drinking. Um, you know, he's he, you know, I mean, my heart goes out to him. You can I can see in so many different ways where he's struggled and what have you. I think when people and, and the reason I wanted to talk about this, I think you know, some of the content that Nadia's popped up on her Instagram. You know, we're drinking, she, uh, she, we're drinking, she's drinking, we're dancing. It's hilarious, it's lots of fun and all that kind of stuff. It's totally done. All that happens, doesn't just happen in a kind of unconsulting sort of fashion. It's not like, we're all going out and you've got a coat and you've just got to sort of drag with us. There's consideration, there's thought, there's care, there's thought about. And it, that thought doesn't have to be much more than, you know, oh, would you like a diet coat? Or would you like, you know, you know, not even like, you don't ask, oh, are you all right if I get drunk? And I don't ask for you to tell me if you're going to get drunk. I know, you know, I think there's a kind of unspoken sort of understanding in couples that I'm sure Ben and J-Lo have a dialogue about this. Mm. And I think it's very easy for everyone on the outside to go, oh, it's so deeply insensitive, what have you. That's not to say it perhaps isn't at times. And I think couples where one drinks and one doesn't do have to have, every now and then, as we do, touchstone moments where I feel free enough to be able to say, do you know what? I really wish I could just, it's not even about saying I don't want anyone else to drink, but sometimes I just really want to be able to say, oh, I wish I could have a drink. And that's not me saying I don't want you to, or I want mm. you to feel bad about it. But the fact that I can just say it makes me feel oh, heard and, and what have you, and that you, you kind of understand that. So, well, I've said many times before that if you hadn't got sober, I would be a fully fledged alcoholic. Mm. I, I really do think I would have been because you becoming sober over a very long period of time, I, because I was such a heavy drinker, 
I have just, I, I am now a moderate drinker. I mm. am absolutely moderate. But if I want, but every so often, you know, I will get absolutely plastered with the girls, or not not our girls, but like my friends. So mm. like, if, you know, me and Kay and Jane will go to Spain for a couple of days, we'll have a pissed up lunch in a way that I wouldn't have a pissed up lunch with Mark. Mm. I wouldn't get pissed and like be glad all the way, because there's just no way I would do that, because I do think, that is too much for the person that's not drinking. Mm. Um, but but I see that as a... That's not me going, oh, and I wouldn't do it for Mark. That's actually good for me as well. Mm. So, it, so it works. And don't get me wrong, it'd be lovely sometimes for us both to just get a bit pissed mm. and have a bit of a laugh. But we have a laugh all the time. Well, Every day we have a laugh. We yeah, don't need also, to have a drink. And also, the la- the, 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 I posted a photo yesterday just because just, it just struck me. It was a moment where I actually felt very safe, very comfortable, very at ease, very free. It doesn't happen often, hasn't happened often. And I think, you know, that's the price I pay for not drinking, unfortunately. It's a small sacrifice. It's that, OK, I, I, I don't find that comfort. And I think the reason one doesn't find that comfort that often is because I knew I was around family and they understand and they understand totally. And even if they were getting drunk or drinking, they also, within that enjoyment, also understand, understand and understood. And there's the odd look back just to make sure you're right. It's when you're in a situation where it starts to go like a, like a steam train off the tracks in the direction where everyone is utterly in their own stuff and the drink is driving it. Those scenarios are going to be dangerous for anyone who's not drinking and really it is incumbent on the person who's not drinking to make sure they're not there. Stephanie Spencer says, my husband has been sober for six years and I couldn't be prouder of him, but it is so difficult sometimes that I feel guilty for getting drunk, which he would never make me feel, but I can't help it. And then you've kind of captured the absolute dilemma. Also, like sides. if somebody was on a diet and you sat eating a great big fish and chip dinner, you would feel... Yeah, it's, 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 it's the same thing. It's like... But I think, I, I'm like you, you know, Mark doesn't make me feel guilty, but I do. I do feel bad because, and one thing that I never do is like, if we're both going through something awful, like we just get some terrible news or we have had an unbelievably stressed day, I purposely do mm. not have a drink mm. because I think that would be so hard. Like we've had a awful day because we've had many awful days throughout our marriage <laughs> and usually if we were both drinking we would pop out and it gives you that moment to go down from where you are but oh, I, ne- I never do that yeah. because I think that is is cruel I think that would be cruel to you yeah. would you yeah yeah no, well yeah I think it would be and I and I think I think just not checking <laughs> good shit lollipop you are a provocateur aren't you is it Wednesday yeah I'll be drinking <laughs> well, I hope you have a good one. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's about tone, it's about attitude, it's about... It's also, you know, I think possibly for the person who's drinking, it's a bit frustrating when the person who's not drinking says, what kind of a night is it going to be? That is really important to the person not drinking. Because, uh, you know, no one, very few people would aim to go out and just get annihilated drunk. But if it's a set of circumstances where that is more than likely going to be the eventual destination place it really is wise for the person not drinking not to go. But when I do ask that question, that's not me wanting to kind of micromanage or be obsessive. It's about being careful and it's about being safe. And, you know, one of the other things that I struggle with, and I think I, I think a lot of people, will sum up on this, I think a lot of people drink for this reason, is that actually an enormous amount of small talk and chit chat at social events is fucking boring and pointless. Yeah, that's why And I'm really drinking. hard to get through and drink helps you get past it and to the fun bit. And unfortunately, what that means is the fun bit becomes baked in alcohol. And so for the person who's not drinking, you don't get past that initial bit. You just then get to the incoherent bit, which is fun, but you can't get it. You can't be part of it. So it's hard and it's difficult, but I do think the best behaviour around it is to really almost essentially wrecky what sort of a night it's going to be. And that night, I knew we were all going out. I knew I was with family who loved me and it was going to, going to be good. And it was so nice yeah, to yeah. see you relaxed and just be like you, you yeah. being really in your own essence. Yeah. Somebody there just saying their son is six weeks sober. Mandy Nanny, my son is six weeks sober. He went to a party and he kept being asked, why are you not drinking, but could not tell them the reason. So oh. if he drives, he can just say he drives or he can say he's on, me- uh, he can say he's on uh, medication. You know, sometimes there are all sorts of kind of... Isn't it awful? Like, so imagine if he was going to a party and somebody came up to him and said, are you, you, do you want some heroin? Yeah, do you want to smoke on my... Do you want to bang on my crack Why pipe? would he have to give any reason? Yeah. It, it just makes me so angry, that. Yeah. Because it's just... 
you know, like, I, I, we're always trying to instill this in our girls, you know, we know about peer pressure, we know all this, but it's okay to say, well, I don't, I, I don't want to, just because I don't want to. Yeah. You know, what, what's it got to do with you, mate? Basically. Um, well, probably because you've got some people who say you only live once. You know. So you could, somebody could offer you a prawn sandwich, you go, no thanks, why do you eat my prawn? Well, I'm allergic <laughs> to it. But you can't say you're allergic to alcohol, and I believe alcoholics are allergic to alcohol. I think it has a, react, a reaction. Alcoholics are allergic to alcohol and really fucking boring people. Sorry, there's that weird, strange kind of idea that if you don't drink, you're boring. There's nothing more boring than really drunk people talking That's shit. Really talking hell, absolute yeah, shit. Repeating. Of which none of them ever remember the best bits the next day anyway. Anyway, there we go. Guys, oh, look, can we do a sort of belated birthday? Happy birthday to Della Nixon. Happy birthday, happy birthday to, to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Della Nixon. Happy birthday to you. God, sorry, I started high. Oh, it's nice to be back. That we'll so be nice. more sane tomorrow. Um, if you're listening on podcast, if you want to see what all the nonsense was about, just go to the Sawala Adelies on YouTube. Go to YouTube, put in the Sawala Adelies. And, um, yeah, 